Good morning. This is episode five of Musings of a Gen X Home Baker. And today we're actually going to talk about a recipe called just buns. The cool thing about this recipe is it is a full on something from the past. It's a tight recipe card from my girlfriend Carol's mom. These are her rolls and she wanted after starting these sort of musings, she was like, hey, can you make those rolls with my mom? And really, that's what this has been about, is connecting friends and family, talking about stories from people's past. I have heard because of this baking, it has opened up a whole host of new conversations with my friends and family from people I've known even all my life for the past 30 years that we've never talked about, like great stories from people's grandmothers and their recipes. And this really sparked the conversation with my girlfriend Carol about her mom's rolls. She had to track down the recipe card, which she sent to me, texted to me, and I copied it off. And her sister-in-law had it. So it's just something that sparks memory and conversation. And the interesting thing about this as well is that it calls for yeast cake. It's a half cup sugar, two cups warm water, one third cup butter or oleo, one teaspoon salt, one large yeast cake, quarter cup warm water, and put together, add two beaten eggs and seven to eight cups of flour. I had never heard of yeast cake before, which I think is quite interesting, and perhaps you have, or perhaps you haven't, but yeast cake used to be sold in like the dairy section of a store, and you really can't find it a lot anymore. And right now, if you, I looked online just to see what the conversion one, and it's about two packages of dry yeast to every four cups of flour. So to give you some idea of what that might be an equivalent of, because I looked at this and thought one large yeast cake and I thought I have absolutely no idea how to convert that or translate that. So that was a really cool thing that until this moment, until this whole thing started of just getting recipes from people, from friends and family and having those conversations that this was a great story too about that yeast cake and just having that memory of something that they remembered that her mother made and she doesn't bake a lot so she's like hey can you make these rolls and I said yes you know after I talked in I don't know which episode it was about my mother's wheat rolls this is going to be nice this is not a wheat roll recipe but this is certainly a nice addition to my recipe collection of rolls so to make with for soups and whatever kind of um, occasion. So it's really cool. So it sparked the conversation of the yeast cakes and my friend's mother's recipes and all that kind of memory that brought with it. So, and it pulled her sister-in-law into the story and it was just a great time to talk about story and memory. And that's kind of really what we're doing here. It's, it is about the baking, but baking and cooking and being together and talking about those memories opens up a whole new world of conversation and connection, which has been really cool. Now today, I'm veering a little bit from the 1980s new wave to something a little more current. I can be current too. I have my Adele shirt on today because the girlfriend who gave me this recipe, Carol, she and I went to an Adele concert. I don't actually remember when. This could be that couple of days or a couple of years ago scenario as well. But we decided that if she had made the sort of pronouncement to ourselves that if she was coming to North America that we really wanted to see her. We'd been very impacted and moved by her music and we thought, oh, that would be really cool. My niece Krista also had said, hey, if I'd like to be part of that as well if she ever comes to North America and goes on tour. So she, uh, the time that she was coming to the, the United States, my niece was graduating from college, so it coincided very nicely with her coming to Chicago, Adele that is. And so we got tickets to see her at the United Center in Chicago. So that was all fun and good. And really the story, the funny part happens after the concert. The concert was great. Multi-generations were there, which was so amazing. Dads and daughters, grandmas, mothers and daughters. It was just great to see the multi-generations there at the concert and how warm and welcoming and just it was a great a great concert. But afterward, we had to get back to our hotel. The United Center is enough on the outskirts of Chicago that it's not really close to downtown, particularly if your girlfriend has decided to wear new fancy sandals. I'm just saying a word to the wise. If you don't know how you're gonna get back to your hotel and you might have to walk and you are at a concert, 
wear comfortable shoes, you might have to walk. So my girlfriend had her fancy new sandals on, which she had not worn before. And they're flats. They're not even shoes. So she had those sandals on. And after the concert, we started walking back because there were no cabs, Ubers. There wasn't anything happening. There were a lot of pedicabs, mind you. So that will play into the story in a few minutes. So we started walking thinking we could do it, but she was almost limping. There was no way we could walk back, and there was no way I was going to allow that to happen. So we talked to several pedicabs, and they were quite expensive to go downtown, and there were three of us. So we let several go by because we just thought it was too expensive, but at the same time, you don't want to be lame after this. So we did decide to take one of the pedicabs downtown, back downtown, and there was this moment with three of us, really two of us, are, we, two of us, my friend and I, adult full-on people. My niece was just graduating from college. And Carol and I got the sort of seats and Krista kind of had to perch on the side of the pedicab. And this image came into my mind. And I don't know if you remember from Rocky and Bullwinkle, Mr. Peabody and Sherman, do you remember Peabody's Improbable History? And those opening scenes when they, they kind of show quick little snippets of the different shows that they were going to have. And Peabody was, had that sort of hat with the flaps on it, Egyptian flats. He was riding a chariot. That is the image that came to mind when we were riding this pedicab was Carol and I were in the seat, Krista was on the side, and that image from Peabody's Improbable History it came to my mind in an instant. It just was like, Phew, right there. So we did finally ride that downtown, kind of with this rocking bullwinkle mental image in my mind from Mr. Peabody and Sherman, the original one back, you know, time ago. And we get downtown and we played an absolutely exorbitant price just to go from the United Center downtown, but my girlfriend at least it saved her feet. So we had that kind of experience and we got to our hotel room, we went up to the elevator, the elevator doors opened onto our floor and the first thing we did was Carol kicked off those sandals as soon as the elevator doors opened and she kicked them down the hall. It was probably, I mean, I know you had to be there, but it was one of the funniest things I have ever seen because she was just so done with those shoes. They seemed so fun and cool in the beginning. And they were, they were, they were totally cool until we had to make that march back from the United Center, half march really, because we did get that pedicab and paid an exorbitant amount. And we all laughed about that too, because we kept <laughs> talking to each pedicab, trying to think the price might be different. It wasn't. So anyway, it was a funny, Funny occasion, funny story, but a great memory. And so because I'm going to make Carol's rules, or Carol's mother's rules today, that just story came to my mind of how baking and, and memory and story all go hand in hand. Because it just, the mere mention of talking about her mother's rules, I kept thinking about all the experiences we've had together, and particularly that one. And just... You know, she's going to be, Carol's going to be with me today in my mind thinking about her, and we're going to think about her mom at the same time, and we learned something new about yeast cakes, which I did not know. So let's go ahead and make these rolls. I wanted to talk to you about what I've been reading lately, because that's part of it. I read all the time. I'm a big reader, and I read pretty much fiction and nonfiction inexchangeably. It's not one or the other. It's probably about 50-50. But today I want to talk about two fiction books that I've been reading. One is Jojo Moyes' The Giver of Stars, and it's talking about a nonfiction or real-life event that she's fictionalized into a great novel, great story. And it's about the Pack Horse Librarians of Kentucky. So during the New Deal and that time when Franklin Roosevelt was the president, Eleanor Roosevelt had a program for the pack horse librarians and it was really about rural communities where these women would ride mules or horses and take books in like saddlebags to patrons 
throughout the countryside who wouldn't normally be able to get to the public library. A great fun read, especially if you're a big fan of public libraries and I am. So that was a great book to read as a, as a great, just a really great novel. And the book that I'm currently reading from my book group in May is called The Overstory by Richard Powers. And it's also a novel, but it's all about these great short stories about the natural world. It's very fecund. It's richness in the whole natural world as far as story around trees and their impact on us and relationships to us. Seeds, leaves, what it's like to be in a tree and all what happens if you fall from a tree and what happens about if you're really connected to planting trees as a part of your story or your family's story. And it's it's a little over 500 pages in the paperback version, but it's all these fables and story about the natural world and it's very rich and beautiful and I think right now, being at home so much, this idea of connecting with the natural world is even more important. So it's just a great read right now on our connection, our deep, deep connection, not just walking in nature, but our direct connectedness to nature. So two books, as I said, The Giver of Stars and The Overstory. So let's go ahead and get started. It's a pretty simple recipe and it talks about putting all of the ingredients and combining them together. So you have half a cup of sugar, two cups of warm water, a one third cup of butter or oleo, one teaspoon salt. We talked about this one large yeast cake, but I'm gonna go ahead and add two packages of regular yeast with a quarter cup warm water, two beaten eggs and seven to eight cups of flour. You put that all together and you let the ingredients actually stand for an hour together. Then you shape into rolls and let it stand for one more hour. Then you bake at 350 degrees until brown for about 30 minutes. So there's where our 30 minute time span is coming back into play, which we've talked about a lot. So we're gonna go ahead and add our half cup of sugar, okay? Then we have our two cups of warm water not hot, just warm water. And we had our one third cup of butter or oleo. I'm gonna go ahead and use butter. I know it says both. I typically bake with butter unless it just calls for oleo. I do have one cookie recipe that I use oleo because for some reason the butter changes the texture. But we're gonna go ahead and add, and I've, I've melted it slightly just for purposes of being able to stir easily. So I'm doing my one third cup of butter, and I am using at the moment salted butter. It has not said otherwise, so that's what I'm adding. I'm adding one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of salt. I'm doing the large yeast cake and the quarter cup warm water, which I have combined prior to this, just to start some activation. So we're doing that. And I'm just doing the sequence of what it says on the recipe. It's kind of interesting. I think normally, had I thought about it, I would have put the flour in first because that's what we're used to. But I'm just, as I say, going ahead with the sequence of the recipe. I'm gonna go ahead and add my, I'm gonna go ahead and add my two beaten eggs. All right, we're stirring that kind of around. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the seven to eight cups of flour. And I'm gonna go ahead, because of the amount of yeast that I have in this, I'm gonna go ahead and add the full eight cups of flour. So we'll start that process. And then I will turn off the camera for that amount of time because, you know, it's not that interesting to watch me add eight cups of flour, and besides that, I'm really afraid I'm gonna lose count of how many cups I'm putting in the bowl. In the course of the process of me putting the eight cups of flour in, as you can see, I changed bowls. I had that clear smaller bowl, but I really needed to go back to my beautiful yellow larger bowl, because eight cups of flour is quite a bit of flour. I also decided I was using my 
dough whisk, pastry whisk, I, I think I use them interchangeably, but it probably is really called a dough whisk, which you've seen make an appearance in several of the episodes. I really had to employ my KitchenAid mixer for a little bit with the dough hook on it for just a brief moment, just for some final mixing. As I got to the final eighth cup, it made it very difficult to stir and shape within my yellow bowl. So for a hot second, I put it in my KitchenAid mixer with the dough hook, and then I finished it with my dough whisk. And then I started shaping it with my hands because this is really gonna sit for an hour. So that's basically all we do. We combine those ingredients. Again, think eight cups of flour, what, what kind of bowl shape you might need. So go with your bigger bowl first. I did not, but I learned. So, so go ahead and start and go with your bigger bowl and then shape it. And you're basically, as I said, you added all those ingredients together, one fell swoop. I think next time what I would do, again, this is the first time I've made this recipe because that's sort of the fun and the magic of going through some of these recipes is add your dry ingredients first, do the list the opposite way. You know, I, that's kind of typical and I hadn't really thought about it. But go ahead and I would add your dry ingredients first, which have probably given me a little bit better idea on how big of a bowl I needed. But at the end, our end result is a beautiful dough that's going to sit just on its own, I'm gonna probably cover it and sit it on the oven just as a place to rise for about an hour. Well, after letting the dough rise for over an hour, look at this amazing dough that we have. It literally, I came down and looked, was doing some other chores and I came down and looked and it had actually pushed the covering up so that it was sort of, the covering was sitting on top of this beautiful risen dough. So we're gonna go ahead and form this beautiful dough and it smells amazing as well. So we're gonna go ahead and roll this dough into balls or rolls. And we're gonna go ahead and put it in, just I decided to grease our butter, you know, around some round cake pans, I guess you call them. And we're just gonna go ahead and do that. I have four rounds ready to go. I'm not sure how many rolls this is going to make up, but we're going to go ahead and get started with that. I have floured my work surface so we can start just to make a few rolls. I've got to like get my hands with a little flour on it so I can get this amazing, I mean it just really does, it smells absolutely phenomenal. So I'm just going to take, you know, some of it off and put it on my floured surface and you know I'm just going it does not say what size to make the balls but you know I'm kind of just gonna make a nice you know, I guess I'm not sure what size of a ball this might be but I'm gonna go ahead and shape it and start putting them in the pan and I'm just gonna put the balls in the pan as you can see and just start putting them in my pan and we will again let all of these sit again for an hour before putting it in the oven. So again, one more hour after we've let it risen for over, well actually over an hour I let it rise. We're gonna go ahead and let these rise again once we get all of the pans filled. And then we're gonna bake them at 350 degrees for 30 minutes. To give you some idea, I probably have, let's see, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rolls in one of my round pans. And I probably could have made them slightly smaller rolls. My guess is after an hour of these rolls rising, they will be quite large. I did not need the third, or the fourth, I should say, round pan. It's basically three, and I could have made these slightly smaller and filled the third pan. So three round, you know, you could use a, a square pan as well, but I went ahead and, and did the, the round. But just so you know, this is sort of what they look like before they will rise again for another hour. Well, I have to tell you, these rolls have been rising for an hour and they're about to go into a 350 degree oven for 30 minutes and they look and smell amazing. Now I have to admit, I might've made them a little larger than they needed to be, but, but we'll know for next time. 
So anyway, they filled the rounds very nicely. In fact, look at how nicely these have risen. They filled the entire pan. They're just absolutely beautiful. So we are gonna go ahead and put them in the oven again for 30 minutes. And I have to tell you, it's just filled my kitchen with the most amazing, lovely, lovely bread smell, roll smell. And I just really feel like Carol's with me today and her mom, like we talked about, and all of the people that were part of this recipe. Well, I have just gotten the rolls out of the oven and they look amazing. They sound amazing. So you can hear that beautiful, gosh, this beautiful sort of golden brown, just amazing. And they, again, smell amazing. <laughs> I mean, I can't say that word enough, but they just smell amazing. And I don't know if I'm gonna have them. I mean, they're large enough. I could use them for a sandwich but I cannot wait to taste these rolls. And it may be as a sandwich, I might have them with butter, I might have with them butter and jam. It could be as a sandwich. I'm not sure yet, but I can't wait to have one of these rolls after they're cooled down. Well, I was gonna wait longer for them to cool down, but I can't take it anymore. I've been smelling them, thinking about them. So I think we're gonna go ahead and try one. We're gonna put, I think, a little butter and jam on one as a little test one. As I said, it's it's a nice snack. They're, they're good sized. I mean, I can use them for sandwiches later. But gosh, I just cannot, cannot wait any longer. And they smell, oh my gosh. They smell and look amazing. Look at that beautiful inside, oh my gosh. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little butter, which may be Sacrilegious, I don't know, but we're gonna go ahead and do it. If I, dr I drop the butter here on my counter, because it's gonna melt. It's all of these are still warm enough, so the butter's all nice and melty. Put a little bit of butter on. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put on some Stonewall Kitchen Jam, and it's raspberry peach champagne jam. So that should be great on these lovely, lovely rolls from recipe from Carol's mom. And again, I just have to think about the fact that the top of the recipe card just said buns. We didn't even have any description, you know, or anything like that. It just said buns. So we're going to go ahead and try one of these. I think roll, I call them rolls, but the recipe does actually say buns. Okay, we're going to go ahead and eat one. Mm, a little bit of taste. Mmm. Those rolls, buns, whatever you want to call them, are absolutely delicious. This did not disappoint at all, and it's just a great vehicle for jam and butter, kind of like the No Need Country Bread, but completely different. Completely different how we did our yeast, converting the yeast, really simple ingredients, more than, of course, the No Need Country Bread from the first episode, but nonetheless, it is just absolutely absolutely delicious as a great everyday rule.